Hey, welcome to another tutorial from Pentacode. Today we're going to chill with Redis. Um, this is meant to be for beginners, but I do need you to be familiar with how the terminal works and how the server works. Um, so without further ado, here's a tutorial on Redis. Now what is Redis? Redis is an in-memory database that can be used as a cache or message broker, but it's mostly used as a database, so as a temporary data, not for persistence. Although some people do use it for persistent database, but we are, in general, people use it for cache. So today I'm going to show you how to install Redis to your computer in three different ways. The first way is the standard installation on your computer via the website, like you just follow the instruction. The second way is to set up Redis via DigitalOcean where they set up and install and configure Redis for you automatically. So it's probably the fastest way to do it. And the third way is via a Docker container. Since everybody's talking about Docker these days, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's quite simple, actually. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to head over to redis.io slash download. Here you can download the version that's currently available. So for us, we're just going to follow this set of commands here. Um, this way you, you will use the wget utility to download the Redis um, files to your computer. So for now, let me just go back to desktop. Right. So I just need to type this in, and it downloads the Redis. This is a tarball. And then we need to unzip it. So I'll just do tar xzf redis. Now this will unzip it, and then we go into the folder, and then just make. Now this will build the actual executable for Redis. So it is, we're basically compiling from source. Now, to um, if you're on an OS X machine or Linux, you want to make um, Redis ex executable uh, to the root. So you want to do sudo make install. So now we have Redis installed on our computer. So you can verify that it's working by typing Redis server. Now, that's fine. Now, since it says address already in use, because I already started the server on my MacBook. But if you are using a, a, a the first time, you'll see the screen that says the server is listening. Um, since I already have it open, um, that's why I can't really show you. But trust me, if, if, it, if you get something back from this command, that means it's working. And we can test it out by starting up a Redis client by typing Redis CLI. And there we go. So this connects to my local Redis server at port 6379, which is the default port. And now we can, you know, get information about our server. And so you can actually set a key. And then you can get test and it should say hi. There you go. So the server works. So it's quite simple. You just, it's like two, two commands and you install Redis locally to your computer. So um, it's very simple. Now, the next way of installing Redis to get started is via DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is a cloud uh, server provider where you can go to the site and you can sign up for super cheap servers. And they have a lot of uh, options when you, when you open so what they call droplets. This means servers. So when you want to start a server, you, uh, you can pick these pre-installed images such as LAMP, uh, LAMP, mean stack, PHP, so any a lot of things. Um, you can right here. I'm basically selecting uh, Redis, the image, using the pre-configured droplet. So if you're interested in, uh, in DigitalOcean, you can sign up via the link provided in the article or in the description below. So we're just gonna pick Redis, and then we're gonna pick uh, the smallest server available, which is five dollars a month. And then we pick a region. Since I'm in New York, I'm going to pick New York 3. And then here you can actually like create multiple droplets at once, but we're just going to create one. And you, when you press create, it will start creating the server for you. So within a minute or two, DigitalOcean will tell you that the server is ready, and they'll send you a password to the server. 
So since I already done that beforehand, I am going to SSH into the server. So you just do SSH root at the IP address of the server, which is also inside your email that they send you. So when you do that, and then you just need to type a the password to the droplet, which I have it here. I'm just gonna type it in. And then so if it's the first time that you start the server, they will ask you to reset your password. So let's type in the current password and then enter the new password. Enter it again, and we're in. So we're inside the droplet. This is the the Redis server that we just set up via the pre-configured script. So now this server is ready to go to um, to to show you, you know, um, what the what it can do. So let me exit the server. So the reason I exit the server is because I need to grab the IP address, which is this one. So if let's say you're on the client, right? You're on your local computer here, and you want to connect to that server that you just set up. We can do it very easily by doing Redis CLI, and then that's H for host, and then paste in the IP address. Now here we got run into a little problem, which says connection refused. Now why is that? The reason this is refused because DigitalOcean uh, configured the Redis instance for you and they do it in a way that is secure. So there are some built-in security that, um, that's inside of this server we, that doesn't allow anybody to connect to it unless they, have, um, they are inside of a whitelist of IP. So let me show you how we can disable that. Just for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to disable it and then so I can demonstrate how you can connect to your droplet from your local computer. So once you're inside the droplet, you need to you know, use your favorite editor, whether Nano, Emac, or Vim. Um, you need to go to etc, Redis, and then Redis conf. This is the configuration file for the Redis server. Um, There's a thing here called bind. Now this one will only bind this server to the local local host. That means nobody else can can uh, connect to this instance other than itself. So we're going to sort of comment these out. So if you want other servers to be able to connect to it, you will add the IP address here. Um, now this is not enough. There's another thing called protection mode. Protected mode. Protected mode basically disallows. Um, you can read more about it. It basically is another uh, security configuration. So we're going to disable it. Now the port number. The default port is six three seven nine. Now there has been a lot of exploits uh, or scanners on the internet that scans for vulnerable Redis instance on the web. So changing your port might be a good idea because a lot of people use this default port. But we're, we're going to leave it here for now. So uh, once we're done, we're just going to WQ and save our changes. And then you need to restart the server. So the way you can restart the Redis server on the droplet is by doing sudo service redis restart. And this will restart the server. And then you'll take the new configura configuration. So now let's uh, connect to the server again, this time, and let's see what happens. There you go. We're inside the server. So it's very simple. Now um, you can do info command, and that's why you know it's huh, it's still running protection mode. So that's that's interesting. So let's let's try to set something. Great. Okay. So the protection mode is still on somehow. So let's go inside and see what happened. Huh. So let's try to find the protected mode is uh, for some reason the protected mode is still on which uh, is weird it should be off because we commented out oh you know what we should not comment it out it should be the thing should be on except we need to say protected mode no so it's a needed configuration uh, line so let's start the server we start the server again and then we'll try to connect to the server locally again. OK, and let's now, if we do info, there you go. So you get all the information you need. And let's try to set a key. 
then we'll, if we get test, we say, hey, so it works. So you now just connect it to the instance, the droplet, on your from your local. Very handy. And so that's why I like DigitalOcean the most, is that they set everything up for you, you don't, so you don't have to do it. And they also configure it in a nice way that it's recommended by most security professionals. So that's fine. Uh, what if you have some application running on your server already and you don't want to start a new server just for Redis. You want to run Redis on your existing server. So one way we can do this is via Docker. So Docker has been uh, around the block for so long now that like everybody wants to do Docker. Um, it makes it very easy to isolate uh, you know, machines or services on your servers. So let's try to start a Redis instance via, I mean, a Redis container via Docker. So um, if you're on local, we, I need you to create a file called docker compose.yml. So we're going to use docker compose because it makes things a lot easier to orchestrate different containers and how they interact with each other. It's like a syntactic sugar on top of docker. So once you create this file, since I already have it created, I'm just going to open it up. So I have Visual Studio Code installed. I'm just going to type code, docker, compose. And this will open up the file here. So this is all there is we need to do to type into the, to the, uh, to the file. This will basically start two server, Redis, I mean two containers, Redis, and the thing called Redis banner. I'll explain what that is in a minute. But basically this tells that we need to grab the Redis image and then start a container and proxy the port inside the container of 6379, which is the default Redis port, into 9001 of the host machine. And Redis Banner is a very nice UI GUI for Redis where you can visualize all your keys and do simple operations on them. I'll show you how it looks like later. So in here, we're just going to do um, 9000 for port for Redis and then 9002 for Redis banner. So without further ado, let's start the containers. It's very easy. You just have to do docker compose up D. Ah, it says I couldn't connect to it because I'm, I'm running um, docker for Mac, so I need to start a terminal that is running docker. Okay. It needs to run the daemon. So once that's done, we just let me do it again. Docker compose up D. And there you go. We got um, if you type Docker compose PS, here you go. So you got two containers running. And that's all it takes to start to install Redis on your local computer or on your server via Docker. So now if we, we need to find out what the IP is for the Redis server. So to do that in Docker, you have to do Docker machine IP. This will tell you the, the um, container IP, so you need to do that. And now if we want to connect to Redis, which is here, it tells you it's on port 9001. So let's try it again. Just like before, instead of, but this time, instead of connecting to the server, we're going to connect to the Docker container. So do Redis, CLI, and then that's host is the IP, and now we have to do, the port is different this time. The port is 9001. This is what uh, we want Docker to proxy the port to. So if we do that, and we're inside. See how fast this is? Like It's already installed. You don't have to download Redis on your computer. It's, it's like all contained inside of a, inside of a container. So now, um, let's set a key, okay? So set test1 um, penta set test to code and then we just set two keys right so we can we're going to use a thing called redis banner to visualize our keys in redis so copy the port here or rather let's copy the ip here we know the port is 9002 and then just go directly to your browser and then do 9002 and there you go. You see, this is the thing called Redis Commander, and you can see your keys and their values very easily via a GUI. And you can actually do commands here too, you know, to like you don't need to go to the terminal anymore. So this is extremely useful. Um, you can import export data, um, you can have a command reference, 
very useful. I highly recommend you using it. So there you go. This is um, it's, a, it's an introduction to Redis and how to set it up in various ways. I hope you find um, this to video useful and you know like and subscribe to our to our website and social media if you want to support us. So thank you very much. I will see you next time.